So welcome back. And today I'm gonna to be diving into something that I've never really messed with. So in case you didn't know, I've been working on computers probably for over 25 years and I've never gotten into networking, networks, NAS, servers, any of that type of stuff. My knowledge of that pretty much consists of my internet service provider comes over to my house, install their modem, and then I just set up a router. And that is about it. I just know how to set up my router basic and just make sure my password is strong enough so somebody doesn't hack it. Uh, my router is some type of Asus ROG model. I forget which one it is and I'll show you the setup uh, once we get to that part of the video. But in a nutshell, the only thing I've really done is just kind of set it up through the house, wired it through the attic. I have a port over here. I have one in my living room for the main rig where I run a hard line from and I run a hard line over here. Even though the Wi-Fi works really good, I'd rather have the speeds of that. You know what I mean? But I've been wanting to get into the whole NAS thing primarily because I have a lot of um, programs and data that I need to get access to, especially when I'm working on the bench over here. Instead of having to re-download everything, if I have everything just saved on there along with some important files, that could be nice. And then eventually, if I'm able to understand this stuff and dive into it, set up a Plex server. I got a lot of classic 80s and 90s mo uh, movies that I love to watch and It'd be nice to have it set up where I could just watch it on the TV, download the app for all that type of stuff. So in today's video, I'm gonna try to dive into it and hopefully try to figure this out. So let's show you what we got. So during my quest for knowledge and information, I guess the timing was perfect or my phone was listening to me and sent this information out. But anyways, TerraMaster reached out to me and they said, hey, we have an eight bay all SSD NAS. Are you willing to take a look at it and do a review? And I'm like, absolutely so what I what really intrigued me about this is the size the size is perfect for the area that I'm gonna put it in and it's toolless it's supposed to be simple and easy and it has its own software so kind of going into the specs a little bit 10 gigabit Ethernet tool free installation their TOS 6 operating system and I've done some uh, research and watched a couple of videos and it looks really easy and simple for the basic that I'm gonna do now, obviously you could dive in deeper and do other stuff, but you know, let me start simple. Eight M.2 NVMe 2280s, 200% performance boost, not 100% sure what that means. And it's supposed to be quiet at 19 decibels. So that's pretty cool. Any other specs that we can do? So file server, backup, virtualization, video editing, 4K multimedia, home data center. Yep, that checks the boxes. That should be good. And this is the F8 SSD plus. So. Here's the model information and I'll post links to all that stuff in the description. So let's dive in, let's open it up, pop some SSDs in here and see if I can figure this out. And I'm not trying to go crazy server and as all that type of stuff, just, just the basics, you know, just the basics. So I haven't dove into this. I haven't opened this up. I haven't even experimented with the software or anything like that. So we're gonna do this together. See how simple it is for a noob like me. And then we could give it my thoughts. So, right off the bat, size of my hand. I mean, yeah, perfect. Now, they do sell versions for SSDs and mechanical drives. And, I mean, they got a lot of stuff. But this, that could be cool. All right, so we got our power adapter, network cable. Um, it's supposed to be toolless. But it has tools and it has screws. Okay. What's in here? What in the world is this? Oh, heat sinks. All right, pretty nice. And they also give you the uh, thermal pad on that. I like it. And what is this? I guess it's like a rubber band so you can attach the heat sink to it. Okay, cool. So the way I think you're supposed to open this, and I'm just doing this without looking at instructions, maybe unscrew that. Nice. And, oh, okay, pull forward. And there we go. So now it's supposed to have 16 gigs of DDR5. I forget the model of the CPU. I'll post that on the screen, but for, up here, four in the back, 
and this is the CPU of all that type of stuff. So not a bad setup. So now I was going to go ahead and order some uh, M.2s. I wanted to get at least uh, two or three two terabyte ones, but I'm going to hold off on it only because I'm still learning. Once I learn, then I'll actually invest and get uh, some decent M.2s. But for the sake of learning, we're just going to use some cheap M.2s that I have lying around. Pop it in here and, you know, get our feet wet. Uh, let's see. This is a 500 gig, and this one is 500 gig. So we'll use these. Ideally, when you set this up, you're going to do some type of raid and all that type of stuff. And I'm going to learn it as I go. And ideally, you want to use the same similar drives. But like I said, this is just for learning and experimenting purposes. And once I dial this in, we'll get some crucials. I really like the crucial M.2s, and we'll pop this up with at least four two terabytes. And that should be good enough for what I need it to do. Not bad. And you got fans for airflow, so blow in cool air. Exhaust right over here. So let's pop this thing in. I think it goes this way. Yep. Cool. Pretty simple. So let's head over inside the house, show you my setup, where I'm going to set it up, and then we'll dive into installing the software. All right. Plug that in right here, just like so. Now the power button is right up here. It's got a beep, really? It's 2025 and we got beeps? Thought we were past that. So this thing is on, it is connected. Now let's dive on to the main rig and let's get this thing installed. All right, so we go to TerraMaster's website, go to support, download, uh, number of drive slots, we have eight. Go to our model, F8 SSD, hit start. And what we need to download first is the desktop application assistant for Windows OS. I already went ahead and downloaded it. Once we do that, it will scan it and it finds it. So this is the information over here. Double click it and it's uninitialized, so we have to initialize it. So now we're going to hit the start process. It gives you all the warnings, all that type of stuff. Make sure you write down your IP address. Hit start. And we're going to hit begin now. And it's going to load the bootloader and all that type of software with it. Should take a little bit. And what it's going to go ahead and do is going to say disk number NVMe, disk 1, disk 2. It's going to erase, confirm. And we wait. Now it's on the screen, TOS is being installed, please wait. It says it'll take about 10 minutes, moving pretty quick, so. And we continue to wait. Now after doing that, it's going to reboot, and everything is going on in the other room. So it's kind of cool that you can kind of do this all right over here. Like I said, I've never messed with network stuff, so this is all cool and new to me, a whole new world. So it says, what, four minutes and 10 seconds? So let's wait and see where we head to next. Now we need to set up our settings. So we're gonna come up with a username, DLM, password, not gonna tell you. Now they ask for a security, e uh, security email for our verification code, so I'm gonna go ahead and send that in. And that's it, now we're in. We can reboot or shut down the TNAS from here as well as logging out. You can also undertake account and system personalizations, goes through a whole bunch of tips, applications, backup, control panel, we can allocate permissions, configure the network, all that type of good stuff. So now that it's installed, we have access to all the apps and programs and everything. We'll kind of go through through each one to demonstrate this TOS 6. It's pretty simple for the most part. So I went ahead and went for the default installation. You can actually um, customize this and set up your own type of raids and everything. I just let this do it automatically because it's a lot simpler for me. That way I can learn the app and get more familiar with it. And then later on, install faster, better drives, and really tweak it the way I want. So this is not an in-depth walkthrough, but just kind of give you an idea of this software, which kind of gives me the whole Mac experience. But anyways, so we could go to the settings over here, go to our disk, and right now it is synchronizing our disk. It does pick up our 500, 512, and our 256. Now the way it's set up right now is set up for T-Raid. That's TerraMaster's way of just combining the disk and everything. But like I said, you can actually go back in and configure this for the preferred RAID setup that you have. This is good for learning. Synchronization should take a little bit. And once that's done, we can actually go to our storage pool 
and we can create our storage pools and do what we got to do from there. Now moving on, we do have the application menu, which we can go to the App Center and we can download the apps that we want. Whole bunch of different ones. I mean, the common one, the one I'll be looking for is the Plex Media one. So I've mostly got this thing set up the way I want it. So to kind of show proof of concept of the whole file manager in their TOS 6 web browser, go to my volumes, homes, DLM, and you can set different folders and different users and kind of really you know, break it out. You even have the one for the Plex. So for our Plex, we could actually put all our movies and all that type of stuff in there. And then we could um, download them or stream them from there using the app on another device. But we're just gonna go to the DLM folder. And as you can see, I already went ahead and put something in there, but let's say we want to, so let's go ahead and say we wanna take this file, put it in our NAS, go ahead and drag and click. It's gonna copy it over. Very simple quick and easy. So now what we would do is we would go ahead and log into another computer, uh, like one in the garage. We could go to file manager and then we come over here, DLM. And then if we right click it, we could hit download. Insecure download block, keep, and that's the setting I'll just have to tweak. Hit the keep button. And now when I go to my downloads, and this is if I'm in the computer, uh, on the computer at the garage, as you can see, it just downloaded right over here. So let's do the 4090 LP scan download. Downloads pretty quick. There we go. And now so this I have my video. Up. And from what I understand, you should be able to preview it. So this one pops up and, as and I'm actually playing this on my NAT. So pretty cool, very simple, easy to use, nice software. And I can't wait to dive into it more and see what else it can do. One feature to mention too is their business backup suite, which is something that's pretty cool, very autonomous once you set it up. If you go over here, click that, it gives you their topology to break down on how it works and all that stuff. And it has all these different features. Um, their R Sync gives you the guidelines on it, breaks it down very well. Time Machine if you're a Mac user, centralized backup, which this is really good that if it senses any anomalies, it'll go ahead and just start uh, backing things up and restoring data. Doable backup, just a bunch of different apps that you can install. Their TerraSync one, which you can create up your own private cloud storage server. The cloud sync that you can kind of sync, get that thing working together. The USB copy one, which you can pop in a USB drive, it'll just automatically back it up to that. So very simple, install these programs, use the ones that they have and their backup software. It's actually pretty decent. My dog is very lazy. That's all she does all day is just kind of sit there and bark. Are you scared of the camera? Are you? Going back into the setup, this software, the TOS 6 software, is pretty impressive. Now, I haven't messed with any other software, but considering that I'm a noob and learning this, the explanation on that is pretty good. I like the fact that whatever you do, it explains it very well on how to do it. So you're not stuck trying to have to do a lot of research and figure it out on you know third parties like YouTube. So I give them a lot of credit for that. The other thing too, the BBS software has tons of features. I mean, you could really you know, set your stuff up to back up really easy. Now, I am not a network person. I'm a complete noob when it comes to it. And you've probably seen that watching this video, but considering that I was able to set this up within less than 10 minutes, install the software, which took 10 minutes. And within 30 minutes, I had my system up and running. And that's just using the default settings. Now, if you're really knowledgeable on that, you can customize your pools and your RAID setup and everything like that, which I'm gonna learn more about that so I could kind of get the most speed and the most, I guess, redundancy or backup the way it is, but really cool program, really cool software. And this, I definitely like the size and that'll be convenient. And that's gonna fit up here. Very nice. It's quiet, so pretty cool to dive into it more. Now the one con about going with this type of system, but I will say is that M.2s are not cheap, the MVMEs. I think a two terabyte right now goes for about $150. So, I mean, if you do the math, that's $300 just for two and then two, four, six, eight, doing a bunch of math. I mean, you probably spend, you know, almost a thousand dollars for really getting NVMe storage. But for what I'm going to use it for, I can get a couple of one terabytes, you know, PCIe Gen 4. The speed is enough. It'll definitely get the job done. And I should be happy with that. Now, TerraMaster does offer the same type of backup solutions for SSDs and mechanical drives. So I'll post the link down below if you're interested in checking this thing out. Thank you to TerraMaster for sending this, this to me. And comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, criticisms. What other software do you recommend? 
And what other recommendations do you have for a NAS setup? If you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not, and as always, we'll see what we come up with next.